Today I am going to show you how to import an aerial view from Google Maps and trace it in Rhino. So, when you open up Google Maps and take a screenshot, make sure to include in that screenshot this little scale here. So that would make scaling the image properly on Rhino easier later. I like to screenshot by holding down the Command Shift and a 4 to snip the window I want. Next, we want to open up Rhino. We will be drafting from top view, so double click on this tab. Make sure that your ortho is off for the purposes of this tutorial, and make sure that gumball is turned on. Type in units in your command box, and a window should pop up like this. Note that there are two tabs, the model and the layout tab. In the model tab, set your units to feet and your distance display to feet and inches. If you're more comfortable with metric units, you are welcome to work in that mode. This example will be using imperial dimensions, however. Next, we want to adjust the layer display color and the layer names. As a refresher, to add a new layer, click on this button here. You can rename a layer by double clicking on its name. Like that. Make sure that you have a total of eight layers. So, one for aerial, one for building, properly line, trees, curb, striping, and annotation. Change the display color of each layer by double clicking on each box. Please change the display color for aerial to white, building to blue, property line to magenta, trees to green, curb to yellow, annotation to red, and striping. You can make it gray by choosing um, these different options here. Note that the colors indicated here are the colors being displayed in the model not what is being printed. In the command box, type picture frame. And a window should pop up. Select the screenshot of the aerial view. Click anywhere and place it. Hold down shift to ensure that the image is inserted straight. Make sure to keep the north arrow up. Next we want to scale the image 1 to 1 scale. Select the image and type in scale. Select one end to the other while holding down shift and type in the dimension indicated. Press enter. I like to use the command zoom select or ZS to zoom out of the selected object. To double check that you have scaled the image correctly, type in distance. Holding down shift and that is close to 20 feet. You can also change the transparency level of the image by clicking on the image, going over to the properties window here, going down to the materials section, click edit. A window should pop up and you can adjust the transparency level of the image here. And now it's a little bit more easy to see the lines that you're going to trace on top of this image. Um, make sure this is on the layer Arial and 
when you're done, select the image, type lock, so that when you're tracing, the image won't budge. Alternatively, you could also just lock this layer, like that, or select the object and press Command L to lock it. To unlock it, you just type unlock. We can begin tracing the outlines of our building. Make sure you are on the buildings layer. Use polyline and to exit from the tool, press enter. We can also use the command offset. Select through point to offset points, um, lines like this. Um, alternatively, you could also use copy. And because gumball is on, we could move the lines easily using these arrows. We can also rotate it by using the gumball tool. And if you hold shift, it will make a 90 degree rotation. Type M for move and we could align it to this corner. The command trim will trim the excess lines like such. We can also use the rectangle tool and rotate it this way for more accuracy and move it here. The command stretch is also very helpful sometimes. When you're using that command, to use that command again, you can press enter and it will do the same thing. Another helpful command is extend. Select this line and once you select the other line, this line will extend to this line. You can use trim. Alternatively, if you have two lines and you want them both to intersect at this corner, type in fillet, set the radius to zero, select both lines, and they should join like that to make rounded corners and if you have two separate lines you will have to join them first select the polyline type in fillet corner and you can select the degree that you want the, the corner to be Next, we are going to hatch the building outline. In order for this to happen, we have to make sure that our, our lines are joined. So select your objects and type join. It should become a closed curve. Select the curves, type hatch, and this window should pop up. If none of these standard hatch patterns are loaded yet. You could click on this menu and press on load standard hatch patterns. You could also load custom patterns um, using this option here and downloading .pat files from the internet. However, today we will just be using a standard hatch pattern. Set the scale to something that looks good to you and press OK. Note that in Rhino the curve and the hatch are separate objects. So when you are adjusting the 
um, the lines after, the hatch pattern won't automatically adjust to your new changes. So make sure your drawing is finalized before you hatch. Lastly, we are going to add some trees. Make sure you're on the tree layer, select the circle tool. I like to have the center O snap on while doing something like this. You can hold down shift while on gumball to scale your objects um, without distorting it. Next we are going to make this into a block. Select your lines, type block, and we can make the base point the center of the tree name your block, press OK, we can scale this block, copy this block over, One advantage to using blocks instead of uh, grouping is that we can edit a block and by doing so it will automatically update all instances in which it appears. To do so select the block, type explode, and now we're going to edit this block select all the lines again type block and if you rename the objects as the same block from before you will see that it has also updated this tree that we copied over earlier. <laughs>